Welcome to Electron Line. In the previous video, we talked about a delta Y circuit and showed you that the line voltages are equal to the phase voltages and the line currents are equal to the phase currents. We also came up with an equation where we could calculate the line voltage, or I should say the line current, as being equal to this equation right here, but we didn't show you why that was the case. In this video, we're going to do that. What we're going to do here is we're going to use Kirchhoff's rules where we sum up all the voltages around the loop and set it equal to zero. In other words, we're going to start at B and go around the loop like this in a clockwise direction. So we first have the voltage VAB from the negative to the positive terminal. terminal. So that's a positive voltage rise of VAB. Then we come across here with the current IA in the same direction, which is a voltage drop, the current times the impedance. And then going across here, we go against the current, so it's a voltage rise of IB times the impedance. And when you add all that up, it adds up to zero. Now we're going to take this equation and solve it for I sub A. So first of all, we move these two terms to the right side. This becomes positive, this becomes negative. Then we solve, we reverse the equation, and we divide both sides by Z sub Y, because you can see that each term here has a Z sub Y, so we factor out Z sub Y, divide VIB by Z sub Y, or Z, ZY I should say, and so we end up with IAB equals the voltage divided by the impedance, and the voltage AB is the same as the phase voltage with a zero degree phase angle divided by the impedance. So next, we need to realize the relation between IA and IB. We know that they differ by phase angle of 120 degrees, and here we have a graphical representation of that. As a matter of fact, it should say I sub B. Notice 120 degree phase difference, so that means that this has a real part of minus one half and an imaginary part of minus the square root of three over two. What we're now going to do is we're going to replace IB with what IB is equal to, and then write this in terms of its magnitude and imaginary, or it's a real and imaginary part. So then we can add the real parts together. One plus one half is three halves, and the minus times the minus gives us a plus. So now we have IA times the quantity three halves plus J times the square root of three over two is equal to the right side, the phase voltage divided by the impedance. Now we can write this in terms of magnitude and phase angle, which ends up being the square root of three with a phase angle of 30 degrees. And then if we divide both sides by the square root of 3 times the phase angle of 30 degrees, we end up with 1 over the square root of 3 on the right side, and then we have to subtract the phase angle of 30 degrees, and so therefore I sub A can be shown to be 1 over the square root of 3 times the phase, the, the phase voltage with a phase angle difference of minus 30 degrees divided by the impedance of the load. And that's where that equation came from. Then of course, to find I sub B and I sub C, we simply subtract 120 degrees twice, once or twice, in relation to I sub A. And so that's how we find the three line currents IA, IB, and IC. Of course, what we could also do is we could do a, we could sum up the voltages around this loop and sum up the voltages around that loop. And if we do that, you can see that you get the very same result by going through the same process to find the other two line currents, or simply take the first line current and then find the next two line currents by subtracting 120 degrees. Either way, you'll get the same result. And that is how it's done. Hmm, there's a kitty. Hi, kitty. 